this see how this works wow wow if I didn't just see that I would not believe it all right you guys today we're gonna be taking a close look at pushers Hopefully by the time we're done with this video, it'll help you guys figure out which pusher is right for you. Now I hooked up with the guys from Arctic because they offer this wide variety of pushers that you're gonna be finding different variations of this on the market. And these were the only guys that I knew that kind of had it all in one stop shop. So today what you're gonna see is what we call a floating moldboard where each section of the moldboard contours up and down and then also static moldboard which is just like your, your basic straight moldboard going across. And we're gonna actually show these in action, demonstrating maybe helping you guys figure out which one is right for you. No. Let's hook up with Lucas from Arctic Sectional Pushers and start talking about some blades. This is the work before the work actually begins, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go, go over and get the sledge. That's the SDLG. We've got a 15 and a half footer right there. And you can see how low profile that snow plow is. So we're with Lucas. He's actually one of the sons of the owners. Yep, Randy, right? Lucas straight. For Arctic sectional snow pushers. So I'm gonna be testing out three different models from Arctic. The Arctic sectional pusher is the yellow one. That's kind of like the Cadillac model, but we're also gonna be testing out their Raptor unit, which is more like a typical snow pusher that you're going to see offered on the market. And this is what they do go head to head with on some of the less expensive models, but we're also gonna be testing out Arctic's snow plow as well. And you can see how low profile that snow plow is. So the sledge gets it, but right next to it are a couple of our other pushers. They're just too big too bulky and they're limiting our visibility. Holy crap, like from the cab? It's, I just, you gotta, you gotta, ex you just gotta experience it to believe it. Yeah. I mean like, when I'm sitting up there, Lucas, I can see everything. I mean, it's not even like I got a freaking pusher on the front of this thing. Yep. Holy crap. There's going to be three things that jump out at you right away. 
number one is how much snow these things can move. And that's because the machine and the plow float separately, meaning all four tires of the machine are on the ground, giving you better traction. Second thing, they back drag like nobody else can do. Third thing, they scrape the lot. That floating mulberg design just contours to the lot and scrapes it up, meaning you're gonna have a lot less salt that you have to use on those lots. Something to think about. The, the visibility with this is so low to the ground. One of the biggest things that allows you to push such a wide blade on a machine like this is the rolled edge is so aggressive it rolls the snow. Yeah. And I hear from multiple guys once they start running our plow they get 30 to 50 percent fuel savings because that machine is just working on pushing its own weight and it's not dragging that blade across the pavement. And that slip hitch allowing it to operate independently too is a, is a big saver. Right. Yep. So that's one of those things that you, it's the little things yep. really Lucas that add up. Yep. Well, I actually want to um, have Lucas walk us through the differences between the different pushers so when you guys are out there looking maybe it'll, it'll help you guys understand the difference between an HD pusher, yep. a sectional pusher, yep. a, a typical pusher because you guys there's a difference in price on all of these there's a lot of options and it literally just gets freaking confusing after a while. Yeah I mean there's a lot a lot of options out there and so this is kind of the top of the line plow okay. it has the most advantages pretty much no cons and you get the sectional mold boards which offers the best scraping the sectional trip edge so if you were to hit a manhole cover or a curb one section will pop up the trip edge will trip back and it'll trip forward once it clears that obstacle it also prevents you from um, damaging your machine, damaging the blade, and losing all that snow if you were to have a solid mold board with a trip design, or even the worst case scenario, no trip, uh, trip edge, and then you're just gonna destroy that rubber edge, or that if it's a steel plow, you're gonna cause a lot of damage. Do they actually still manufacture today uh, plows without trip edges? Um, yeah, it's more of a, a price point, and it's definitely like, you know, your big airports, they're all, flat, perfect flat concrete, and yeah. there's nothing out there to hit. It's pretty much where your biggest application is going to be. So I had, Lucas, you didn't know this, and you guys probably didn't know this, I had an, an operator bought a brand new snow bucket. Yep. Brand spanking new, had it delivered, it was my shiniest one, I polished it, yeah. <laughs> and I turned it over to P-Rob. We yep. called him P-Rob, that okay. was his nickname. And P-Rob put that snow plow on, and P-Rob came back an hour later. Yep. He had a big knot on his head, and my snow bucket yeah. was literally yeah. looked like an L. Yeah. There's no trip edge on those snow buckets, so that's something also to take into consideration. one of my loader arms. Yeah, I, I was grateful the snow bucket came yep. and that P-Rob was in, you know, still, he wasn't drinking soup through a straw because he lost all his teeth. Yeah, so. and it's not something to laugh at, but um, that's that's one of the things why we made this plow and made it do the things it does because for those frustrations uh, my father faced back in the 70s and 80s made him come up with that because he was tired of making plows heavier, tired of making them stronger, and they still broke, or they broke the machine. One, the Black Raptor, good pusher, <coughs> but it can't do what the Ar yellow Arctic sectionals can do. Talk 
about making. Do yeah. you guys make these or do you have Chinese people make them and import them? No, they're made in the USA. They're made in uh, Kankakee, Illinois by our, with our plant with US Steel. Okay, and yeah. so since you guys make them, you're also able to service them if something goes wrong on yep. them? Yep, they're very uh, service friendly. Um, the, the beautiful part about the plow is it's for the most part completely bolted together. So if you were to say damage one of these mold boards, you just simply remove these bolts unbolt all the poly blocks and then exchange that mold board out and that's what's so great about the survivability component of this plow is it's never a total loss i've had customers driving down the road with their loader and they hit black ice and they hit things and they bend the frame of their plow you guys are able to slap a new uh, frame on and the rest of the plow is still usable it's never a total loss it's a lot more affordable in the long run because we have these plows from the early 90s that are still functioning today. Actually, they're still plowing snow in the hometown of our plant. A company named Acme Steel is running them all, and they started off with no trip edges, and then he converted them over because all those parts would convert over, and they're still running today. All the sectionals, the light duties and the heavy duties alike, all operate on the same system. They're both together, they're made to survive. If one component gets damaged, you can replace it quite affordably. Your competition is saying that those pucks are a weak point of your design. So back in the day, we used to have thinner blocks and it used to be a problem. We kind of ran into some issues with our suppliers on the blocks and we've since then found a much more dependable supplier and we've changed the thicknesses. One of the first, one of the first differences you can see is the block on the top is thinner than the block on the bottom. And that is really redu reduced the amount of brakes we're suffering. Um, we run over 350 of these pushers. You get a new guy in it that's never used it. He's eager to prove himself, to say, hey, don't call me out the next storm. Don't call the other guy, I wanna be your guy. You know, I got operators that do things I ask them not to, but they think it's gonna make them look good. I'm gonna play a little bit of a devil's advocate yep. is it's probably better to break a puck than to break part of the mold board yeah. or part of the steel frame. Yeah. Yep. You gotta have some, it's, it's what is it, on a Weak snowboard, point. Frankie, what are they called? Through bolts, throw, on snowboards, you know the, the breakaway bolts? Oh, shear yeah. bolts. Shear bolts, Yeah. right? Yep. Right? Yep. You know, now you don't have time yeah. to do yeah. <laughs> So, in, in a sense, yes, if you were to hit an obstacle greater than what the blade is designed to trip over, or an operator drives it into a pile of frozen snow, the, the failure point is designed to be the poly block. If you're talking about a block that costs 50 to $60. Okay. And can be changed out very quick, especially with these new electronic impact guns you can yeah. get from Home Depot. It's an infield fix very quick. It's nothing okay. you gotta bring back to the shop. Okay, so that's the sectional, but you have ones that don't have that design. Right. Right? Yep. So this is your top of the line. Yep, this is top shelf. Now where are we, what are we looking at? Now this is more of a typical design, Lucas? So, yes. Yeah, so this is more of your typical origin design where it has a solid one piece mold board. Um, but where we differ is we still employ our patented and trademarked slit pitch to allow the pusher to um, travel independently on the pavement from the machine. And this reduces drag because the weight of the machine is not resting on the uh, the shoes. Okay. It's resting on its tires. And then the plow weight is resting on the shoes. And then that allows the machine to just work on pushing the weight of the plow in the snow and not itself. So you can go a lot faster. You have a lot better traction and better fuel savings. Um, but you can notice on this pusher, we do have a uh, independent sectional trip edge for that steel cutting edge, so you still have that protection if you were to hit an obstacle. You can still clear that obstacle without stopping the machine solid like you were talking about earlier. Okay, um, I also noticed that your wings, Yep. Uh, these, so here's kind of one of those main differences that we should probably point out, yep. because they're price point differences, right? Yep. I mean, this one's inevitably gonna cost you more than this one, but this one, the wings themselves are gonna flow yep. independently over the and contour the side of the road. Yep. So you've got the machine, the plow, all acting independently from yep. each other. And then on this one, you got the wings acting independently of the actual plow itself to yes. help contain your snow on the sides. Yep. Are you cold? Uh, a little bit. It's pretty really dry. He's from Chicago. 
It's not used to Minnesota. We got them, yeah? Don't you know? Yeah. A little different there, huh? <laughs> that was negative 50 there the other week. Oh, but... uh, yeah. You had one cold week. You don't yeah. get to break. Yeah, you guys got me beat. We got like a yeah. cold month. So. Yeah, so. <laughs> but yeah, so anyways, the, the, the wings on this plow pivot separately um, from the frame to allow a couple things to happen. One, you're able to drive up to a curb. Yes. And get the cutting edges up to a curb, and then you can lift and clear that curb and scrape it clean, push the snow up and over the curb. And then another thing it'll allow is these wings can clear a curb. You know, this is a pretty wide plow. Yeah. You get into some of these tighter business uh, corporate settings, and you're gonna have guys that could hit a curb, and this wing will float right up and over it like butter. I've seen it actually. Okay, so that is actually one of the main benefits of this plot, like you said, this is probably the top of the line yep. for what you guys offer. So we can see the, the main differences when we go to something like this. Hey, a question, what's the difference in price point between these? So you're gonna be looking at for a 15 and a half footer, um, roughly over 9,000. Um, this plow here, you're gonna be more in that um, neighborhood of low fives, mid fives. Okay. Yep, yep. Is there so. a difference in warranty on them, Lucas? No, no, the warranty's all the same. What I is just, the warranty? I can't warranty stupidity, though. Okay. <laughs> so, we do, I mean... Uh, we, we all know that one, right? We do warranty basic manufacturing, like most manufacturers, and that allows us to say if there was a bad weld or a defect or a, a uh, issue with the paint, that we'll, we'll stand behind our product. Okay, so um, the trip edge on this case does not is not these aren't compression springs, no, right? Rolled springs, yep. Rolled springs. Yep. So why I've heard compression springs are better than rolled springs on trip edges. Am I wrong or am I right? I've never really heard that argument to be honest with you. We've always used rolled springs. We've never had a problem, and it's funny you mention that because we've tested the durability of these springs, and I know it, it takes exactly in the neighborhood of 260 to 282 hits of an obstacle for those springs to fail. And we know that because we put a guy in our yard and the skid steer and he uh, went to town for 10 hours straight and the guy sat there and counted how many times he hit it. I swear to God. And then they finally said it broke. And that's how we know how many hits how it take. How hard did he hit? Like They're hitting uh, planted eight inch um, steel parking blocks that we made. One of the things that Lucas hasn't mentioned that I do know is you typically will test a product for up to seven years before releasing it onto the market. So this plow here, the sectional line, is something that was we manufactured in the early 90s and released on market in 06. So we definitely had um, a lot of testing, field testing, real life application before we release it to market. I would say typically today we're probably looking at two to three years now. One of the things too that Lucas has eluded to, but not directly said, is you are actually a plowing company. Yes, yep. So you have plenty of opportunity to test. So like you don't have an engineer that goes out and in one day just tests it. You actually have, you put these on and you have, you run how many guys in your company? So we have roughly 450 operators and then we have uh, roughly 700 uh, sidewalk crewmen. Okay, so you make something, you put it inside of your own company, yep. and you use it, use it, use it, use it, and then you also bring it out and then test it, test it, test yep. it. Okay, so that's important to know, because some manufacturing companies make something, and then they give it to one guy, and then they go, hey, how'd that go? Yep. And that's it, and then the guy's like, ah, I went pretty good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean that's, that's their testing. I don't, I'm not picking on guys if that's what they've got. Because you kind of got the next uh, next level of testing available. Well, you guys tell me what you want to see next. I personally was thinking about taking these Arctic sectionals, which this was my first go round with them, and I was just been insanely impressed, but I was thinking about putting them up and doing compare and contrast with Boss, with, what the heck? 
Do I have a new scratch on my Oh, dang, nabbit. Uh, Frankie and I just got done installing these hardwood floors, and that video's coming out soon, and they're already scratched. Anyway, I was thinking about doing a video where we put Boss up against Arctic, up against Protec, up against whoever else is out there, Metal Plus. I know that's a good one too. And we we're actually show the, di the, the differences between all of these plows, and maybe that'll help you guys out. Uh, my personal opinion, um, yes, this video was sponsored by Arctic, but I tell you right now, I'm so impressed with these literally way beyond what I thought they were going to do. But you guys tell me in the comments down below. And as always, God bless you guys. Go get them and check out these videos right here. Woo! Still doing the Ric Flair thing. I gotta figure out why my floor is scratched. Ah... Uh...